also much of the time, uh, a different much of the time. Uh, so about two weeks before Wikimania in 2008, I got a you know, the, the idea being that I would just read all of the papers published on Wikipedia in the last year. Um, so I did a Google Scholar search, and I came up with a search that looked a little bit like this, and I understand how to read, but there were 800 papers published on Wikipedia in the last year, which I had planned to read and then talk to everyone about. And had actually claimed that I would do that in my uh, in my doc description. So. Uh, the, the, uh, I did the math. I had a 45-minute talk then, back before they moved us to 20-minute talks. So that worked out to 3.4 seconds per paper. Um, uh, uh, so I was like, I'll be a, it's like a super lightning talk. Um, uh, of course, my slot this year is half as big, um, and there's just as much research. Um, there was a couple other, and like Saha made a similar one, and Daria made a similar uh, sort of uh, graph of sort of looking at the quantity of research being published about Wikipedia, but there's basically like hundreds of papers every year being published about Wikipedia. There are there are thousands, depending on how you count, um, like maybe you know, 6,000 or more papers published about Wikipedia, and it's not really sort of slowing down. So the goal of this session, at least as it was sort of initially sort of thrown out there, is sort of it's impossible, just completely impossible. Um, uh, and yet I try to do it every year. Uh, um, uh, again, um, uh, the result is, is that uh, the, you know, the result is something which is which is not to be a comp does not try to be a comprehensive description. Um, what I what I what I'm going to do in this talk is talk to you about a small number of papers, about six. Uh, I mean, I've highlighted six of them, um, and I've highlighted these six papers um, with a series of criteria that I've used to sort of select these. The, the, the first and most important thing is that I've tried to capture what I think are important themes from Wikimedia research over the last year. So each of these papers represents something which I either see as a cool direction in which the stuff is going, or really just something which a lot of people are writing about, a lot of papers are being published about. I've also tried to select things which are likely to be of interest to Wikimedians. Of course, that's not uh, all of the works which are published on Wikipedia, but I think that some of it, much of it has a connection, but I've tried to um, select them. Like that. Uh, and then the third thing that I've tried to do is talk about research which is not done by people who are not at the community. So you will not see your paper unless I've screwed up. Um, uh, I didn't know you were coming. Uh, you will not see your paper up here. Um, when I started this in 2008, that was like not a criteria which disqualified anything, basically. Um, uh, because uh, for the most part, almost no one who was doing research on, on Wikipedia was coming to Wikimania. There were a couple, uh, but, but, but really quite little. Um, looking around the room, I can see quite, uh, I can see a number of people whose papers I disqualified because I knew you were going to be here. Um, so, uh, uh, um, congratulations to your work that I think is important and represents major themes in the, uh, in the research. I will try not to be talking about you. So, in any case, that said, even with, uh, even with all of these, this is six papers out of, you know, I, it's a 1% sample of the uh, papers which have been published here. It's very incomplete and, and, and definitely if you know, know that. So with that, with all of those disclaimers aside, I will move into this. And I'm going to try to structure this as a set of sort of little lightning talks where I'm going to probably, you know, apologies to the people whose papers I'm summarizing. Um, uh, uh, but, but little lightning talks on, on six, six different pieces which each represent themes. So uh, the first paper I wanted to talk about uh, is a paper by Jeff Loveland, who's an, uh, an, an historian of encyclopedias, which I think is a cool Concept. And Joseph Riegel, who is a media studies, um, he's a professor of media studies at Northeastern University. And uh, the paper is, uh, is a historical account of encyclopedia development that tries to contextualize Wikipedia within this broader, uh, within this, within a, this, the broader sort of history of encyclopedia writing. And uh, uh, I think that this is, uh, so the way that this happened was that uh, Joseph Riegel had written a book about Wikipedia. Okay, collaboration. It was reviewed, I believe, in the signpost, and uh, then Jeff, Jeff, uh, the, 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 uh, the, and Jeff Loveland, this is for encyclopedia, read the review and said, read the book and said, you know, that's it's, it's very nice, but I think it's very ahistorical. I think your description of Wikipedia doesn't take into account this broad history of encyclopedia writing. So uh, Riegel said, that sounds great. We should uh, let's work on it uh, together, and they put together this piece. What they do is they cite three modes of encyclopedic production, which they 
claim describes sort of a long tradition of encyclopedia writing over hundreds or even thousands of years. And in each case, a uh, place to sort of try to contextualize what you can be within it. The first idea is this, idea, is this concept which they call uh, compulsive collection. And they use this to describe the work of people like Pliny the Elder, these people who are sort of just like driven to collect information about things. And they say, looking at Wikipedia, you can certainly see people who are kind of sort of fanatics and driven to collect information about things, right? The Wikipedia holics, for example, the, they cite the description in the in the page on blocking that says that uh, that that, uh, that that claims that, that normally uh, administrative uh, Wikipedia are not will not cannot be blocked voluntarily to keep them from editing Wikipedia because they're so like excited about it. Uh, so they see that they see that there. The second concept that they see as common to a long history of encyclopedic writing is what they call stigmergic accumulation. And that's a fancy word to essentially mean this process of aggregation. Stigmergy is this description from zoology that describes the way that wasps build sort of nests on top of each other. And uh, they, they describe the way in the past encyclopedias very often took existing encyclopedic material. They either took the list of concepts covered or even information in it. Very often they engaged in piracy, something which Sometimes happens in Wikipedia as well, but there's they describe this long process of building on top of previous work that they also see as being very important to the way in which Wikipedia has been built. The third, the third thing that they cite is what they call corporate production, and they don't mean production by companies. They mean production by large bodies of people. The idea that it's not just a single person, but that there are um, big groups of people that are building encyclopedias, and this, of course, they see a very strong connection to the way in which Wikipedia works as well. The, the, uh, they cite the Oxford English Dictionary, which is, of course, um, created by the work of many uh, thousands of people who have submitted uh, little definitions or examples of words. They, even the original encyclopedia by um, Diderot was the, uh, took advantage of at least 140 different authors and then was built upon through this stigmatic uh, accumulation through, um, going forward. In each case, they think that Wikipedia's model is not a total break from the past in the way that many people talk about it. And Wikipedia, this new encyclopedia that changed everything, they say, well, actually, it's very similar, both in the way in which it's produced and in, which the, and in the way uh, in which its goal is. I think this is a great example of how a lot of humanities-focused work, which I think it, um, sometimes gets a little less visibility within our community, and still uh, has focused on Wikipedia and done a really wonderful job of helping provide context and a better way to think about what it is that we're doing here. Another, uh, another so next, next little step, um, next paper, the, uh, a whole bunch of, uh, this whole genre of papers about Wikipedia that s sort of uses Wikipedia as a data set. People that may or may not care about Wikipedia per se, but that look to Wikipedia as an example of a uh, very rich data set that used to doing other kind of research. Um, I think this may even be, uh, I mean, it's a very large proportion of all papers published on Wikipedia fall into this category. Uh, this paper up here is a project of, I'll pronounce it Dibunary, um, or Dibunary. Uh, it was an attempt to build a lexical network. Well, it's, it's a, it, it, it is a, an example of someone building a lexical network out of Wictionary data. So another interesting example, because it's a non-Wikipedia Wikimedia project. Um, a lexical network is essentially a network of words and their relationships to each other. So we can think of this as definitions and translations and synonyms and antonyms, all these different kinds of relationships in different languages very often as well. Now, uh, often sort of connected through common etymologies. Now, lexical networks are a really important tool that are used in a whole family of linguistic types of linguistics research. Um, very often a lot of sort of computer-aided linguistics work. Um, and uh, there's a long history of not having access to good, freely licensed uh, uh, lexical network uh, data. So uh, what um, Sarah Sepp did was, uh, uh, Sarah Sepp saw this and uh, said, wow, this is a great, there's a bunch of great data here. It's not quite in a usable um, format right now. Um, and so he sort of wrote a bunch of software to mine this lexical network data out of Wikipedia. Now, what's, uh, what's interesting, uh, What's interesting here, and the reason I want to highlight this paper as opposed to many of the other papers that, um, uh, that sort of use Wikipedia as a data source, is because he also then built a tool to mine this data out of it, which he released freely on the URL right there um, as a sort of free software open source project. 
Um, anyone can use this tool, um, along with the dumps published by the Wikimedia Foundation for Wiktionary, to produce their own lexical networks on their own computers in about five minutes. So you can continue to do it as the, it's like, as the, as the dictionary begins to improve over time. Um, it also, uh, the paper also contains a list of challenges um, into the work, which are caused by the, some of the ways in which uh, Wiktionary is structured. Um, I think that uh, uh, I mean, it, there's a list of things that Wiktionary contributors could do, which would um, be, in some cases, reasonably simple, but which would make this kind of work much easier in the future. Um, I think that this paper suggests, like a lot of similar work, that Wikipedia's effect is much broader than what just comes to viewership on the web, in ways that, that if we pay attention to it, can imply ways that we, that we can maybe structure our own processes to work more effectively for people doing this kind of work. Uh, all right. Um, the third, uh, 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 another major theme in research this year and in previous years is a focus on uh, uh, studies on Wikipedia and quality. There's again a little industry of this, dozens of articles every year, which are in one way or another evaluating Wikipedia's quality and very often comparing it against other types of uh, other types of, of, of work. This is an example from uh, a, a comparison of sites in published in the Journal of Pediatric Otorhinolaryngology. Uh, I got it, uh, I think, um, which is the study of, the di of diseases of the ear, nose, and throat in children. Um, so these are pieces. So, so what these people uh, doing the study did was they went out to Wikipedia and to two other, they did a whole bunch of searches for information about disease, ear, nose, and throat diseases that affect children. They found the three common websites that were coming up as answers to most of the search queries that they put in, and then they evaluated those three uh, those those three sources. Wikipedia was one of them. Uh, e Medicine was another, and uh, Medline Plus is that right? Um, uh, yeah, Medline Plus was the third one. They evaluated each of those through references to textbooks and through experts that they had looked for errors, and through a series of other sort of uh, modes for like sort of more computer methods for looking for errors. Um, what they uh, like, uh, what they find was that uh, Wikipedia had the most errors the, uh, of the three they looked at, the least accuracy, which was a different measure, in, uh, which is scored against, sort of scored against how close it tracks what's in the text textbooks. Um, uh, it had the, it had um, and a sort of medium uh, reading level compared to the others. They found that in most cases it was very similar to Medline Plus, which is one of the major places to look for information here. Um, and although Wikipedia, uh, they also found that Wikipedia had a rather good user interface compared to the others, so um, I'm not sure what that says about the others' user interfaces. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I think that the, the, the important takeaway from this is that there's this huge, like, there's this huge genre of these types of, types of, uh, types of studies looking at quality. And one thing that sometimes frustrates me in terms of this, this sort of body of work is that it's very rare that the people that do these studies coordinate with Wikipedia, and it's also reasonably rare that Wikipedians even see these studies or do or, or do that as well. We could email, it would be very easy to email, you know, the dozen, uh, uh, you know, corresponding authors who publish these studies every year and get a list of the errors that they found, right? Um, so that they could be fixed. And there is no systematic project to do that, and that's something that, I don't know, if you want to do that, I'd love to talk about something like that. But I think that there's, there's, this, there's this little industry which doesn't seem to be slowing down it's about evaluating Wikipedia content in ways that we could take advantage of and mostly don't. All right. Um, uh, uh, an another category of paper, which there was an increasing uh, uh, an increasing number in the last year, which I wanted to sort of highlight, was a bunch of papers that look at Wikipedia viewership. Historically, I mean, I think that historically the main body of research in Wikipedia has looked at um, has either looked at contributors or qualities or data sources. Um, but there's an increasingly large uh, uh, proportion of research which is looking at viewers, either by taking advantage of the viewership logs, which are now published and have been for a few years or taking advantage of uh, other kinds of studies on, on research as well. So this is a, a paper by a group at Carnegie Mellon that tried to look at the way in which people viewed, uh, you know, think about quality by, by trying to, by running an experiment uh, around Wikipedia talk pages. The paper is called Your Process is Showing, and the idea was how do people view Wikipedia content when they see the, when they see the talk pages, because um, uh, most people, which most people don't even realize they exist. 
the idea is to test this, uh, this idea. There's this quote from this guy, John Sachs, who says, laws like sausages cease to inspire respect in the proportion as we know how they are made. That if maybe if people saw how Wikipedia was made, they might uh, feel less good about, they might feel less good about uh, the way that it works. So what they did was they 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 showed they did random experiments where they showed a bunch of people uh, with media articles. They also showed them uh, uh, little fragments of talk pages, and then asked them how much to rate the rate the articles. What they found was that when they showed talk pages, more often that there were sort of systematically uh, lower lower ratings of those pages. Um, when the when the talk pages involved conflict, so you could they could see people fighting over it, they rated it they rated the pages even lower than that. However, if the talk page was, uh, if it was, oh, I'm sorry, if the, if the, if it was resolved uh, um, positively on the talk page, then they found that that negative, that extra negative dip went away. Um, but really interestingly, what they found was that even though people were rating the pages lower, if you asked them how um, good they thought Wikipedia was, or even how good they would think that the, the how, how sort of like the how good do you think this page is, as opposed to just like rate the page, those ratings were all higher. People, when they saw the talk pages, rated them, uh, sort of viewed Wikipedia more, more positively and of higher quality in general, even though they viewed the particular articles uh, uh, as, as, as lower quality. So it's, an interesting, it's an interesting dynamic. I think that there's this very sort of deep and interesting trade off in here that it cuts to really the core of So, Wikimedia's mission is sort of twofold, right? On the one hand, to produce like high quality stuff, which is distributed to many people, and on the other hand, to sort of empower people to become engaged in the community, right? Um, and, 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 and showing the discussion pages makes it very clear that people can edit and this is being built by people in ways that are important, but introduces some, I think, really deep and kind of interesting trade offs. All right. Uh, uh, Another category of papers which I like to highlight is categories hey, people who are going out and they're building tools for Wikipedians. Very often they're not building tools which they don't know any Wikipedians. Um, uh, so they're building tools which maybe Wikipedians might like, but they don't actually, in, in many cases, have any way to. They don't know how to tell people about them and get them to use it. Um, but uh, I don't. I, I believe that this falls in the same category. Although someone might correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, this is a this is a paper called uh, a case study of sock puppet detection in Wikipedia. Um, which is uh, published in a workshop on uh, sort of language, um, language and social media. Now, there's this little academic industry which is designed to detect authorship across texts. Very often, it's like people want to show that one person had written something else, and that, and that they had written one thing, and that they'd also been the author of something else. But what's interesting is that the people who study this have trouble getting good data sets for this because although they can find, it's very easy to find a lot of you know like a big corpus of data, but written by one person and then split it into two pieces. Um, what they don't have is situations where people are intentionally trying to hide their identity while they're writing under different names, right? Um, Wikipedia does not have that problem. Uh, um, <laughs> there are more than 2,700 cases of, like, like uh, accusations of uh, the suspected cases of sock puppeting in 2012 alone. There's a lot of sock puppeting in Wikipedia. And so what, and so what, what these guys did was they, they, took a, they took a database of sort of, a, sort of um, suspected sock puppets, and they took a bunch of groups that were that were confirmed, uh, mostly through check user, presumably, and a bunch of ones that were rejected. These ones, the, the, this is sort of confirmed cases of sock puppets, and these ones were not sock puppets, even though they were accused. And then they take and then they take those two cases and they trained a machine learning algorithm on those two cases as a way of then being able to predict, it, uh, see if they could predict sock um, sock puppets. Um, the base system uh, uh, could predict it 69% of the time uh, um, successfully, uh, um, but this wasn't actually that great because if they had just uh, if they had just confirmed if they had just said uh, every time it was sock puppeting, they would have been 53% accurate um, that way. But they actually made it better by by adding in a bunch of additional information like the user's edit frequency um, and time of day or the time of week, and through that they managed to create a system which was 85% accurate at identifying sock puppeting. Right. Um, uh, the idea, the authors have this idea of creating a system that they described in the paper that could like run in the background and detect sock puppets automatically. Um, but even if that never happens, I think that um, uh, this is an example of something that a lot of community members have worked on in various ways in the past, and that uh, represents a set of tools, or at the very least, a set of techniques which could be used uh, for, for for dealing with sock puppeting in the future. Again, the takeaway here is that I think that we need to, I think that we should. We should get good about working systematically with groups like this in ways that clearly could benefit us, um, uh, benefit us as a community. All right, and then the 
the final paper that I want to talk about is uh, looking more at the dynamics around editing and looking at um, uh, something that a lot of people have talked about, which is the effect of uh, effective feedback in, in communities. There have been a whole bunch of studies, including by a bunch of people in the room, uh, that have looked at the effect of feedback on contributions to Wikipedia, things like you know, reverts, welcome messages that aren't so welcoming, and have shown a whole bunch of effects ar around these. But one concern with a lot of this work is that, the, is, that, uh, is that most of it is not causal in the sense that people who receive negative messages are very often behaving differently than people who are not receiving negative messages. So uh, this is a study by uh, a different group at uh, Carnegie Mellon, which is looking at the, uh, which, which you know, arranged an experiment, which a real experiment done in Wikipedia with different types of feedback messages which were randomly selected. What they did was that after they took a list of people that had created articles that were still around after two days, hadn't been tied to the deletion, had been built, um, and, uh, and were sort of uh, uh, stable, and then they went to those creators and they left messages on them that were either uh, positive, uh, let's see, positive, negative, uh, directive, or social. So positive, negative in this case was not like very negative because it's not, it seems like not a very good experiment to go around like trying to hurt people um, in terms of, uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, research ethics uh, uh, and, and lots of other uh, reasons. Um, the, the, uh, there's more like constructive criticism. Um, also directive feedback was more like telling people to do something. And social was more like sort of welcome, uh, more warm, fuzzy stuff. Um, and then uh, they they were interested in the in the, in the effect both on on newcomers and more established users, and they were interested on the effect both in terms of people's work in the in the articles the, the, the new article in particular and in general in Wikipedia. What they found was that feedback had no effect at all on experienced contributors. So maybe for all the Wikipedians in the room, it's like like, uh, like why do I care what they think? Um, uh, but feedback had no. It, it, their intervention had no effect on uh, experienced contributors. But for new contributors, um, uh, 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 they, they, certainly, they certainly found an effect. They found that negative, this sort of, what they call negative feedback, or sort of constructive criticism, um, and directive feedback had a positive effect on editing in the vocal article, but no effect uh, on editing in general. So if you told people, do this in this article, or uh, this is something which I think is not as good, then people were more likely to edit the article which they had created, but didn't change their behavior more generally. And that the uh, and that the social was the, was the, that's right, the social effect um, uh, no, positive uh, uh, the social effect had a positive effect on people's uh, editing more generally. The positive had a, a general um, had, had a, sorry the social and the positive messages increased people's editing in general, but not in the vocal article. Um, and they found no other effects of these different messages. And they have examples of messages that they use there as well. I think that. Uh, um, I think that the takeaway here is that I mean, it's an interesting, interesting body of work. The foundation is doing a lot of similar, similar work. A lot of people in the room I know are doing similar work as well. Um, I think there's a real opportunity here to learn from and improve our processes based on studies like these, um, and to work with researchers who are interested in doing this. Um, uh, I also want to highlight in the paper there was a nice long discussion of research ethics and working with the community and with committees to talk about it, which I think is also sort of admirable. So that's what I prepared here. Um, there's uh, I'm gonna, when I started doing this, you know, this was the one place that in the year where you can do this. Right now, every month uh, in the signpost, which is in English Wikipedia, uh, there's the last week of the month. There's a summary of the, everything that I've talked about here was in there, I believe, uh, uh, and it's a great, great research which didn't exist before. Uh, Wikisim is a conference about wikis, which happened last week, so I'll wait till next year. Um, there's a great repository of papers on wikis, and there's lots more. So I encourage lots of people to get involved in this community to participate in maybe producing. I mean, I, like I, I, every year I say this is the last year I'm going to do it, and then every year someone suggests that I should do it again. Um, so I won't say it again this year. But uh, but I would. Uh, but I think that, that this is a much bigger community in a very different space than it was in 2008. Um, we've grown up a lot, and we've learned a lot, and I think that uh, there's lots more resources for people who are interested in learning from research. And people who are doing it. So thanks. So I Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it about constant 
uh, I think that, so I mean, it's marginally better because there are some people now who are working, there are now researchers who are working with the community to do it. Um, but I think that, uh, I mean, I think that there was this like, the, the classic example is like people building, um, there were, the classic example was people building like sort of tools or new interfaces for Wikipedia which were tested in a lab and then never released in ways that existed before. And I think there's still plenty of that going on. Um, so is it, I mean, in the sense that I can point to things that in the last year which are in tools which are accessible, I think the answer is yes, it's getting better. Um, uh, but I think that unfortunately a lot of the good examples of this are actually direct collaboration with the foundation. Outside of direct collaboration with the foundation, there's not very much. That's my sense. So maybe the answer would be more direct collaboration with the foundation. I mean, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a great answer, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was actually curious, uh, any, any more stuff, do you see any kinds of tools of like, Research outside of Wikipedia in general? Uh, I, very little research on wikis other than Wikipedia in general. Um, uh, I think that, that uh, I mean, part of that is running up against my selection. Like, so, so my, like my selection um, here. But uh, I mean, very little research on wikis there in Wikipedia. And actually, I'll give a shout out to the next, uh, the next session we're talking about uh, the, the talk on wiki called Wiki Ecology. Maybe a not a uh, uh, maybe a deceptive name, but which is talking about research comparing lots of different wikis, um, and that's exactly. And our, our our takeaway there is if you don't go, it's like we should do more research. Wikis. You mean that language? I mean a language edition of that source. So there's some. I mean, yeah, I mean I can see some of these things. But I, I don't know. It seems like as someone who's done a lot of research on English language, and talked to a lot of people who know a lot of research on that, a lot of papers. Yeah. On that. There's a lot of work on, so, so, so the, there, there's an increasingly, like, I'd say, like, in terms of work that is uh, more, like, there's a lot of work that is looking at, like, using data, set, data sets across different language Wikipedia's and language networks and things like that. But in terms of, like, like looking at, like, comparative, comparative studies of observation, there's been a couple studies, not a lot. Uh, <coughs> Can I just talk to that quickly? Yeah. Um, so the best place for non-Wikipedia wiki research is probably still the Wikisim proceedings over the last 10 years. But when you look at that, you'll find that initially it was a lot about technology and say process and culture came later. <coughs> and it tends to go these days uh, more sort of specialized uh, cases like knowledge management, has specialized knowledge management companies, uh, uh, conferences, and that works for papers on using wikis inside corporations for knowledge management that's or software engineering conferences about using wikis for project management. So that's how non-Wikipedia wiki research spreads out these days. Yeah. And, that's a, and that's a great point. I mean, I remember I once went to, I went, I went to Wikisim once and there was, I was on the Wikipedia like, like group. There was like one session out of uh, three or four. Um, so, so there's definitely some space there, yeah. But, but that's different now. So Wiki, the Wikipedia research track at Wikisim was a full day yep. this, this time. Yep. And actually the regular Wiki track was two sessions. Uh, so um, Wikipedia research dominates uh, the Wiki parts of Wikisim, which is actually now being called OpenSim, <coughs> to allow for open data and open access as well in this context. Uh, so the strength, stronghold is Wikipedia research as well. I'm just going to present myself as well, so people know who I am. I'm working on a PhD student at the University of Minnesota, and I run SuggestBot. Um, and I, when it comes to like doing research across languages and stuff like that, I've, I've done part of it myself. But um, I would just encourage everybody who's here from like Wikipedia communities, if somebody comes over and says, "Hey, we would like to do some research," and it's you know trying to understand. Uh, still, there is some differences between the different language distances and stuff like that. Both of them with open hands. And uh, what I've noticed is that, you know, we run suggest in four languages now, one of, one of them which I don't speak, and we plan to add a couple more. And, you know, you, you'll need translation help, you'll need help understanding cultural issues and other things like that. Um, and that's, you know, kind of like the community, we need, you know, we need to help from the community to get that done. So. I mean, I have this experience over and over, which is that I present to Wikipedians and people are like, where can we find, we'd love to grab your help, where can we find more academics like you? And I talk to academics and they're like, this is, how do we, get, you have unbelievable access to these communities, how can we get connected to people in these communities, right? Like, all right, there's some sort of like failure here. Uh, um, uh, so this is an attempt to, 
address part of that problem. But I think that thinking systematically about how we want to address that is something that, that um, I'd love for us to do as a community. So maybe when you said you had some ideas, can you use a teaser of how that would look like? Oh, I don't know. Like so, yeah, I, so I, I, have a, uh, I, have a, I have a couple. Um, I mean, I'd like to see, I'd like to see doing like building experiments become something which, like I'd like to build infrastructure to, to, for people to do experiments, kind of like people use like optimize or A-B testing sort of built in, but to have it act as a sort of, uh, like a, I don't know, like a, a, a way of creating a like, sort of two-sided market more effectively between academic experiments and analyzing the data people are interested in running that. That's just like one idea. Thinking of more like sessions like this, I think the Wikimedia Research Newsletter is, a fan, is like the best thing that has happened in this space, at least for one direction of that. Going forward, um, uh, so more, more like that. Next year it's going to be great. 